Hi, I'm Albert Gasparian, head women's volleyball coach at Golden West Community College in Huntington Beach, California for the past 21 seasons. We've won 16 California State Community College championships and the past 11 consecutively. Today we're going to be working on situational team defense, strategies of defense, and transition out of defense into offense. The first thing in defense is always to get the ball up, to be in the right spot, and to be able to play the ball so you can score points. Today we're going to work on different defensive situations, how to get in the proper position, how to, after you dig the ball, how to get transitioned into the right spot and try to score some points. Also, down balls and free balls and different defense situations. First thing in a situational defense, we have to always be prepared for the ball that's overpassed, the ball that's overset, and the ball when the other team doesn't hit it. The first situation here we're going over is a free ball defense. A free ball we would define as any time that the other player bumps the ball over the net or sets it over the net from the back row on the third contact. When we run a free ball defense, we expect to score at a very high percentage out of this play, and we want the ball passed and contacted as perfectly as possible so we can run any option of our offense that we'd like to. On the free ball defense, the definition of it, once again, is the ball's most of the time being bumped over. We want our players getting into position, we want them being down, we want them ready, and our setter is releasing and blocking to the net. First play, when it's over, we want to identify that the ball is getting bumped over the net. So the first thing we would do is our setter would yell free ball, would release to the net, our front row is going to back off the net and be ready. Okay, our middle back is going to rotate to the back corner or to the seam, our left back will come off. So on a free ball, the first move, our setter is yelling free ball, and then everybody else will react accordingly. Okay, some fundamental concepts, go ahead and get in position. Go, just go. Is our front row is only taking the short ball. Our front row is stopped and set and not backing up. We want as many balls taken by the back row in particular. The left back will take as many balls as she can get. She has the best angle coming at the setter. So if our left back can get it, she's going to try to get it. Only the short ball will be taken by the front row player. Free ball. Short, short, short. Okay, we need to make sure we handle that ball better. Okay, that was the free ball defense with the setter in the back row. Now, three, persist, three rotations, our setter is in the front row. So if we switch our setter up, it's going to look very similar, but now what's going to happen, these players will be identical. Our right back will move up instead of moving back. Okay, it's very important, as you can see right now, is that our middle front gets off the net and gets down low, or she's very vulnerable to not doing it correctly. Down low, she stopped, and she set.
Okay, so now you can see we now have two hitters that we'll be able to transition on instead of the three. The next situation is a down ball. We would define a down ball as any time a player stands on the ground and hits the ball over, or if there was a hitter that we didn't feel we wanted to block. In a down ball defense, our front row does not block, our front row does not block, our defense, our back row is going to move in, our front row comes off a bit, and we're ready to dig the ball up in the air without a block. Three of the rotations, the most difficult is going to be when the setter is in the back row. So we're going to switch these two back here. Key element, key mistake with setters in the back row on a down ball is that they release and block, run to the net to set without playing defense, which leaves this corner back here, the right back exposed. So if you're attacking with a down ball, usually we would try to attack at their setter if she's in the back row. Fundamental concepts, we're always in our base position. Down ball needs to be communicated, and the first move is our middle back will come up about six, eight feet and be down set. Our middle right back is going to come back, and our left back is going to come back, and we're playing a, a line of three, basically straight across, digging the ball that comes across. Our left front is going to get off the net a couple steps, down low. Our middle front is going to take one step back and get down. Our right front will take a ball, one step off, but she has to be ready to set the ball. So it'll look like this. Okay, crucial point is when the ball gets hit to the setter, she has to call that she's out, and our right front needs to become the setter on the set the second ball. Okay, now when the setter is in the front row, nothing really changes except it makes our offense be able to be much more fluid and faster, except we only have the two header hitters. The advantage is she's able, the right front, the setter, to dump the ball on two and can score in that way, and our middle front can come behind the setter and hit. Okay, so we've now gone free ball and a down ball. Those would be our two areas where we expect to score at a very high rate. The most crucial factor that has to happen on the down ball, go to the down ball, is that the middle back often forgets to move up, which leaves this middle exposed. So the key is, is to make sure your middle back makes that move up and comes short enough. The difficult ball is when it comes deep, if the players won't move their feet. So they make the move up, the ball's hit deep, they either need to take the ball overhand or make sure they move their feet back.
Okay, that would be the down ball and the free ball. Now, oftentimes when the ball is hit against a basic defense, the ball's set, different situations arise. If the ball was set perfect every single time, we would know exactly how to set our defense up. If the block was set perfect every time, we would know exactly to set the in the right spots. However, that rarely happens. Oftentimes the ball's inside, the ball's outside, players hit at the wrong time, and things happen, so we need to be prepared in every situation for what happens. Now, the ball against the four set that's set, the blocker is going to set the block on the hitter. Our basic perimeter defense is our middle front comes over, our right back moves back and digs the line, our left back digs the angle, our left front comes off for the sharp angle, and our middle back stays deep. We have most of the court covered at this point, and if the ball was on the antenna and the block was in the perfect spot, we would work, it would work perfectly every time. Go ahead and just take a couple approaches, Jenna. Just take a couple approaches with that. And you guys, stop, go. Get to defense, yeah. Ready? Go. Okay, so on a perfect set, on a perfectly set block, it would look exactly the same every time. When the ball is set outside the antenna, we now gain an advantage. The hitter can no longer hit a portion of the court when the ball's hit outside the antenna because the antenna shuts it off. So we need to react accordingly in order to maximize our percentages of scoring. So if the ball, let's give her a ball. Outside the antenna, come on over. We now have this portion of the court cannot be hit. So what we're going to do is we will rotate our defense into the portion of the court of which the player can hit. So our right back would rotate over till she could see the ball. Till she sees the ball, our middle back's going to rotate over accordingly. Our left front, who is off the net here, is going to come in for the tip, all the way in. And our left back is going to shade over. So we have three people covering this court. We have the short ball covered. And we have it and we have the entire court maximized with the most amount of people. Go back. I would believe when the ball set off the antenna, move on over, that our right side blocker stays on the antenna. We want to shut off every bit of angle we can without exposing ourselves to any weaknesses. Sometimes people will do this. There's another school of thought of which they would have the blocker move in because she can't hit there. I don't like this because I think that exposes this outside hand to get hit and deflected out of bounds and that, thus giving up a point. I would rather play the percentages, cover as much court as possible, and play defense around it and get good quality swings in our transition. Okay, go on back. Okay, so once again, the ball's outside. She's, hold on, hold on, hold on. The ball's outside. She's going to hit the ball. We're going to react accordingly on defense. Okay, very good move right there where that sharp angle, because her left back saw the situation, she was over there and ready for that ball. On the back set, it would work identical. Our basic defense, perimeter defense versus the back set would be our middle blocker comes over and blocks. 
Our left back goes back to the line about 20 deep, 20 feet deep. Our middle back is in between the hands of the, the right, the right side, right hand of the right side, left side blocker and the left hand of the middle blocker. Our left back is going to get on the inside of the middle blocker's right hand and our left front is going to come off sharp angle and get the tip. On a perfect set, it would be the same every time. Ready? Don't hit it, you can just go. Go. Ready? Go. So we have the court, stay there, stay there. We have the court balanced, everything is covered. If she can't hit it, we would come up for the tip and we would get that play. Now, when the ball is hit out, set outside the antenna, the farther out it goes, once again, we would rotate. So the ball cannot be hit to this portion, so our left back would move over, our middle back would move over, our right back would move over, and our off blocker would come up. So you can see it's crucial for the outside diggers or our wing diggers to realize when the ball is set outside the net and make that adjustment. Very important that they pay attention, see where the ball is set. Now if we go back outside and the ball is set inside, if it's a low inside set or they do it by mistake, just the opposite would happen. The right side blocker comes in, sets the block, our middle blocker comes over. Now, what happens is our right side sees the blocker come over. That person, the hitter, will not be able to hit this portion of the court because there's a blocker there, so our right back comes up for the tip. This spot right here now becomes exposed, so she has to be there. Move it in a little bit more, too. Our left front comes over and digs the angle. Our left back is inside on the sharp angle, and our middle back stays a little neutral, but needs to balance the court this to the right to the line. We're now giving more responsibility of the deep corner to this person. She now, the middle back, has the off-speed deep shot. Good start, right, and then you move in and you call inside and move with her. Inside, inside. That was a very good move, but you could, what happens often is this right back doesn't recognize the situation. The, right, the blocker moves in and that becomes open. So let's take a look how that looks, so don't come up this time. So. So it's very important that all players recognize the situation and move accordingly. What happens is somebody will forget, you leave that spot open, and then you've made a mistake and given up a point. On the back set, it would be the same thing on the normal back five. Our normal defense looks like this. When the ball is set inside, the left side blocker must call inside, inside. 
go back to base. We set it up. This person now comes up for the tip. She's going to balance the court this way. We're going a little deeper here. And this person comes off and digs a sharp angle. OK, let's take a look at that. Okay, once again, it's crucial everybody knows a common mistake would be the left back doesn't make that adjustment. The block moves in and it leaves this spot vulnerable. So once again, it's important that all players are on the same page and know what's going on. We're now in our normal base defense. What happens often is we've now gone over basics of when the people come straight at you. The question now is, or the problem now presenting us, is what to do when the hitters switch assignments. OK, we're in our basic positioning on defense. We have three hitters. Our right side starts on the antenna. Our middle starts on the setter with the middle hitter. And our left side starts with the right side hitter. Every player has a primary assignment of a hitter. That's their primary hitter. When the ball's set outside, our middle will try to go help. When it's back set, it would go, she would go to the left trying to help. Now when the hitters switch, it's crucial that we make the switch with our blockers and understand what to do on defense. The most common play set is the basic X, which would be our middle hitter comes for a quick set, and our right side hitter comes around and hits a higher tempo set in the middle of the court. What needs to happen in that case is hitters communicate. The left side blocker must yell, switch, cross, X, whatever you determine to be your communication, the left side blocker must call it. We would defend it accordingly. What happens then? Come for the one. Okay. Go, go. Switch, 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 switch. Our left side blocker comes in and now has primary responsibility for the quick set. Our middle blocker has primary responsibility for the two set. If the one set is not set, the left side blocker comes over and both players will block on the two. Defensively, we would then bring our left back up for the tip short. Our middle back comes over to the corner and our right back comes to the angle inside the right side person, middle blocker's right side hand, and our left front comes in and down low for the tip. Once again, we've exposed the dead center of the court because we're hoping our middle blocker is able to block that ball or deflect it, or we can chase the ball down. So it would look like this. Crucial that the left side communicates it. OK, very important that the left side sees it early enough, calls it, and is able to make that move. The, more, the most difficult or a more difficult play sometimes to defend would be when the middle blocker goes for the slide and our right side hitter hits the two. Now both people, both blockers must communicate the situation effectively or there's going to be a mix up in the blocking assignment which shatters our team defense. In this case, the middle blocker must see the girl going behind and must yell cross, cross, cross. The left side must see that her player is going inside and yelling cross, cross, cross. And they both know that they switch their primary assignments. Go, go. Now we would make sure here. Now, if the ball is not set to the two, 
The middle blocker must immediately come back and try to block so we get two people up. Go back. If the ball is not set on the slide, the left side must try to make that move over here. Very difficult to defend with two blockers if it's done correctly. Our defense then would react according to the set. So if we make that cross, go ahead and back, and we're going to now set the slide, we would react defending it in this manner. Go. Okay. If we ran the play and they set the two, it would look like this. Okay. Unfortunately, it doesn't always work as it's drawn up. Oftentimes, the play is too quick where the middle blocker cannot get back out or the left front can't get in on the two. If it was the two, and we had one blocker and the middle got stuck, our left front would try to get in, but if she couldn't, she would drop off and just pick this short ball up. Our left back would stay a little bit deeper and we would try to defend it against one blocker. The same would be true against the slide. If it was too quick and the middle got faked out, she would then try to just get over and get the tip and we would defend everything else the same way we normally did. The next switch, we worked, we saw a little bit of when the left side blocker comes in. Now the switch would be when the middle player hit a three set, of which we would defend like this to begin with, she would come with her, go. If we see the ball set, our right front would come off and block and come off and get the tip if she wasn't able to get over and help block. Our right back would stay about where she is in base position and be ready. Our middle back would stay deep. Our left back would stay in her base position. And our left front would try to take one big step and try to get on defense. That would be versus a three set. Back to base. Now, when the left side blocker, we saw what happened when the left side blocker hit an inside set. Now, when the inside blocker comes inside the two, we need to cross our assignments. Middle blocker goes for a three. Now, stop. Crucial element here. The right side blocker must yell inside, inside when she sees her coming in and cross, cross when she sees that it's a cross. Of which case, if the middle the left side came in, we would yell cross. She now would pick her up as her primary assignment. She would have her as her, the middle, the left side hitter now would become the middle's primary assignment and we would have at least one person covering every play. If the ball was set higher on the two, our right side would continue in and block the two. Our right back would come up automatically for the tip. Our middle back would balance the court to the corner. Our left back would back up and our left front would come here for the tip. So it would lurk, work like this. And the same concept would work if the left side came all the way back to hit a back set or hit the slide. So if we had, if we had only two hitters, our hitter hit a three out of the middle and our left side came all the way around, it would be a cross and both, both zones would be crossed so both players need to communicate it. First, the, in, the right side would call inside see the cross coming, the middle would then see the cross coming and call it, and our left front would then kick back out to block that.
Okay, crucial that everybody recognizes what's going on. The higher speed offense you face, the more crucial it becomes. Everybody communicates and is ready and well prepared for it. The next situation that we haven't covered is a switch or a cross when the setter is in the front row. We need to be able to defend the setter attacking from the front row. So, Jenna, you be the setter here. You're the middle. We would start our left side blocker versus two hitters in on the setter. We start in tight. The first responsibility of the left side blocker is to block the ball that's tossed up tight to the net. The middle blocker needs to not worry about the setter, but worry about the hitter when the middle hitter is in front of the setter. The right front basically has her same responsibilities either way. If the setter, if the hitter goes over, she stays with the setter. If the ball's not tight, set outside, or the quickest set, she's coming in, getting down low, and covering, playing defense. Now, when the hitter goes behind the setter, as soon as she makes that move, this middle must call cross, 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 and communicate to the left side blocker that she now does not have the setter. Our middle now has the setter, and the left side will kick out and defend against the hit. So you see if the setter jumps, the middle is stuck with her if it's a tight ball. If not, she's going to kick off, kick out. So Rich, you're going to dump, toss, you can either dump it or set her. Or the, yeah, yeah. Now go in front, hit a one, and then you block with the range. Okay, so you can see if both players communicate, we always have a minimum of one blocker, always striving for two blockers up on any attack, the court's balanced, players are down and set, and we can react defensively to any situation that gets thrown at us. In summary, the biggest thing on defense is to be in the right spot, be able to make the play, especially all the easy plays, transition and be able to score points, and make the other team make the errors and not your team. I hope this helps, and good luck.